Welcome back to the THNC Podcast. I am Jonathan Seigman. This is a special edition devoted to medical cannabis. I'm calling it Cannabis as Medicine. Let me count the ways because there are actually many different forms of cannabis as medicine. All of them are extremely useful and they're all different from one another. So don't trust anyone who says we should only have one or the other. Or we should only have CBD medicine. Or So I'm going to talk about some of the different uh, types of cannabis and uh, even demonstrate a little bit of it. I'm going to try to do that later in the podcast because if I do it too early, then I'll over medicate too early and that doesn't make for the best most coherent podcast now i frequently said that the war on drugs is a crime against humanity i believe that's the case i get accused of hyperbole but usually by people who aren't on the other end of the uh, crime and uh, one of the reasons among all the other reasons the racist underpinnings and all that is just the fact that cannabis is such a valuable and powerful medicine it's been used for thousands of years literally thousands of years all over the world partly because it grows so ubiquitously everywhere, it's easy to grow, and it's been used. Probably Jesus was anointed with cannabis oil. That's how far back it goes, even you know, thousands of years before that. But I'm just gonna talk about some of the different versions of cannabis. Flour is obviously the most obvious one. Now, even among flowers, a lot of people just say, oh, I just like to smoke marijuana, whatever it is. But there are different types of cannabis. So the first main thing is that there is sativa and there are indicas. And the easy way to remember that is sativas are sunny, light, upbeat, indicas, in the couch. That's your mnemonic to remember that. And uh, so sativas typically are very effective for people with things like uh, ADHD. A lot of people use sativas because they can be a little bit speedy. And, you know, obviously the official prescription for ADHD is speed, like Ritalin or any of those uh, speed drugs like that. But cannabis is a much better, much safer alternative. It's also great for depression. Sativas in general will tend to boost your mood, give you euphoria. They can make you more productive. Creative people love sativas because they can get your mind going and get you uh, really uh, activated. So it's a very valuable medicine in that sense as well. Not necessarily indicated if you're prone to anxiety, they could trigger more anxiety in some cases. These are all general trends, not 100%. So in many cases, sativas can make you more anxious. So if people say, oh, I don't like marijuana, it makes me really anxious, and I get all paranoid and anxious, most likely those people had a sativa, and if you gave them a good indica, like Granddaddy Purple, completely different effect. So sativas, highly recommended, again, for a lot of those uh, things you want to boost your mood and be upbeat, depression and those, but got to be careful if you're prone to anxiety. Unless you have depression-related anxiety, as my colleague has pointed out to me before, if you have prone to depression, then and your anxiety is stemming from that, then a sativa might be just the thing. You just kind of have to try things out and see what works. The good news is none of it can hurt you. There's never been a death from cannabis in all of recorded history. The Drug Enforcement Agency in 1988 spent two years researching mar marijuana, and they concluded that they couldn't find a single example of a death in all of the recorded literature, even though it's been used for thousands of years. They concluded that cannabis is safer than many foods we commonly consume. And uh, they also said that it's arbitrary and capricious to keep it in Schedule 1 where it remains even though it's been almost 30 years. Anyway, so it's a very safe plant. You can't die from it. There's no known overdose capacity. You could literally eat all the edibles you want. You could smoke all the marijuana you want. And you might find yourself catatonic for 24 hours if you take enough, but you'll be perfectly fine when you're done. And in fact, it seems to have many, many beneficial properties. It seems to be antiviral, antibacterial. It uh, seems to help prevent the onset of Alzheimer's disease. So literally there are hundreds of conditions for which people use cannabis quite effectively to treat or ameliorate their symptoms or sometimes treat the underlying cause, all these things. So that's the thing I wanna say about indicas and sativas. Indicas, really great for sleeping and relaxing into couch. This is the one that people take, woohoo, get really catatonic. So if people say, oh, I can't take marijuana, it puts me right to sleep. Maybe they were taking a strong indica and if they took a sativa, they'd have a completely different experience. So just because they've tried pot before in some form doesn't mean they've tried all the different medicines or they even know what it is like. Indicas are great for pain. These are typically popular with pain patients. CBD is the big thing for CBDs, and really it seems as though there's what's called an entourage effect, which is that the sativa and the indica, the, the, all the different cannabinoids and even the different plant terpenes that can be found in the profile all seem to contribute to make a better, more healing plant than if you just try to only use CBDs. There's a lot of move on to use CBDs for epilepsy. It's becoming kind of a popular thing that kids with epilepsy are moving to Colorado where they can get CBD medicine. But there are s some studies showing that even for epilepsy, the whole plant extract is better than just a pure CBD. 
But that said, CBDs can be very good for pain, targeting pain. You do need some THC to actually activate the pain receptors. But if you like CBDs, there's now lots of products like these are CBD crumbles. This is a CBD extract. I think I got a couple other CBDs here. Here's one that's just a CBD uh, tincture that you can take. And uh, this one's a spray. This one is phenomenal. I've known several people who've used this for severe anxiety, like actual clinical anxiety, meaning some trigger comes along and the serotonin response just makes it impossible for them to function. This is a little sublingual spray. You just do two sprays of this under your tongue, just like that. And it seems to calm everything right down. So if I get really mellow, it's because I just sprayed a couple sprays of this. This particular one is an 18 to one CBD to THC. So it doesn't have a lot of THC in it. You need a little bit, but this one will not get you high. It just calms everything down. You can also get this in other percentages, four to one, eight to one, one to one, which would have more THC, which would give you more, a different effect basically. But they're phenomenal. And uh, you know, we'll get back to those afterwards. So as far as the flowers goes, as I say, highly recommended. And in fact, I'll show you, uh, there's a lot of different ways you can smoke flowers. This is a uh, rig it's known as, or a bong it used to be known as. Now they're sometimes referred to as scientific glass. Here, in fact, I'll take this out a moment. You can tell this one's for flowers because it's got a female adapter and a male bowl like so. And uh, this one's known as a scientific glass piece because a lot of the glass blowers who make these also make scientific glass like uh, uh, pipettes and uh, uh, distillation apparatus. And there's a lot of very specialized scientific glass that laboratories use. And a lot of these great glass blowers make that, but a lot of them are also making a living making scientific glass for cannabis. This one has a double perk. It has a percolator on the bottom and one up here. So when you put just a little water in there, you'll see it gives you a nice percolation, which means that the smoke gets cooled down from all of that and it comes through and you get a very nice clean hit on it. In fact, I'll show you, I'll use a little bit of this, uh, what is this, granddaddy purple. Just take a little bit. Now, a lot of people like to grind, especially if you have a very dense nug like this one here. You can throw it through a grinder. This is a very nice grinder. You just put it right in here and turn it like this to kind of grind it up. And it goes right through, right through there. And then you get it in this middle one right here. And here's a trick I learned long ago. If you keep a quarter in there, this is kind of a fun little secret. It actually kind of grinds a little bit more and some of it goes to this screen so that you can get uh, what's called keef. And I'll show you that in a moment. I'll just put a little bit of this in here like so. Perfect. This podcast is gonna get more fun as I uh, try this out here. So there you go. And then if you look at this bottom one here, that is keef. That is a very fine powder made from the trichomes that have come through here. And that's quite strong. You can scrape that off and add it to your plants and it gives you a nice strong little boost. And then uh, because I'm a connoisseur, I don't like to take a, a hit with just a lighter like this one, because when you have use a lighter, you actually have quite a bit of butane in here. And when you're inhaling it, you're inhaling a fair amount of butane, which is a bit of a health concern. It's also a taste concern. So I use this hemp wax. Now, if you're smoking a joint and lighting it all day long, this is probably not very useful, but I'm kind of a lightweight. I take small dabs. So I use this hemp wax. You can buy it in small quantities or you can just get a whole roll of it, which will last you forever, especially if you don't use a lot. And the nice thing about this is if I light this hemp wax, I don't get any butane. And now I can take a nice clean hit off of this hemp wax. And just like this. And then you have what's called a carb. We lift that up. It enables me to get the smoke out of there without uh, continuing to burn more. So very nice hit on that. Now, What's become very popular now recently is the wax and concentrates. Concentrates do have an advantage that you don't have to smoke nearly as much. By the way, here's another nice little trick for your bowl. You cut the top off of a, of a plastic bottle and then you can actually set your bowl right in there just like that and it holds it up and doesn't fall over. Thanks to my son for finding that one years ago. Uh, so then if you want to convert this into an oil rig, you just, uh, in this case, I need a female thing and then you need what's called a nail. Now there's a lot of uh, controversy around oil rigs. Part of it is that whenever you concentrate a plant like this and make it more concentrated, people tend to think that there's a higher potential for abuse, which in theory there is. Like with cocoa leaves, people have been chewing cocoa leaves for years, but when they refine it into cocaine, it becomes much more risky, also more powerful, like heroin. You know, opiates have been, opium has been used for years when you refine it to heroin. Case of cannabis, because cannabis is actually like a vitamin, we have so many different systems of our body. We have an endocannabinoid system in our body that reacts to cannabis. 
I'm not too concerned about concentrating it down. Also, it just makes for a very nice medicine. It is a different medicine. This one tends to be more heady when you vaporize in any form, even vaporizing flowers, which you can also do. In this case, vaporizing concentrates. You just get a very concentrated, nice uh, hit. It's very strong and it's very heady. It's very productive and creative. So it's become very popular. It's also popular among young people whenever young people like something inevitably the older generation looks down on them because older generations always have contempt for young people. So I think young people are smarter than we are, so I'm a fan. Anyway, I'm also a fan just because it's a very nice medicine. So the way this particular one works, this is called a domed nail. This is called a nail. Funny name for it, really. It's just a titanium uh, sort of holder there. There's no holes through this. There's just holes around there. So when you heat this up until you know, it's red hot, and then you put this dome on there, and then you're going to stir your thing around. In fact, I'll show you. Here's some concentrates from Golden State Labs. They make very nice concentrates. And uh, basically they've taken the plant and they run it through a process, typically using butane or propane, to extract out the uh, plant material and then you purge the butane completely so that there's no butane or anything like that left in it or propane. Some people also do extracts with CO2. You can also do an extract by just soaking flowers in alcohol. Some people like those. It seems that butane seems to extract the most of the plant terpenes. And so this is a very nice uh, sample. Hopefully you can see that right there. In fact, I'll hold that up for you. It's a nice clear sample of some plant extract. This one is a cookie string called Girl Scout Cookies Thin Mints. And then you also have what's called a dab tool, which is uh, made also of titanium. You don't really want to do this with steel or anything that isn't completely heat proof because you don't want it to be giving off any kind of outgassing. This one is a dab tool with a a carb cap because a lot of nails like say this one here this is a domeless nail it's called so this one you would heat this up and vaporize it and then you would put a card cap carb cap on it in order to be able to inhale the smoke that's in here if you don't cap it then you're going to inhale a lot of air so you're just going to be you know doing a huge inhale trying to get all the smoke whereas if you carb it you just get the smoke more cleanly in this case you don't need a carb because it's a domed nail so when i stir this in here it's going to vaporize the smoke and the smoke is going to kind of come around here and down and up and it gets you a very nice, very clean hit. It's one of the reasons I like it. Typically when you vape, you get more THC and less CBD. So the story is that for pain patients, vaping in general, even with a volcano or one of the big vapors, doesn't work as well as smoking flowers. That said, I once torqued my neck coming off a handstand sideways and literally couldn't turn my head this way without like crippling pain. And this worked. Didn't expect it. I took a big fat dab on this thing. It's called dabbing. I took a big fat dab and instead of getting really, really high as it would normally do if I take a big dab because I'm especially because I'm a lightweight. Instead of that, it just all went right to the point of my pain and I wasn't that high, but I suddenly could move my neck. It was quite shocking how effective and how fast this was at stopping crippling pain in a muscle in my neck that like I literally couldn't turn my neck. So, so in this case, I'm just going to take a little bit of this, uh, thing just to show you what this looks like. Now here's where the optics get really weird and skeezy for people who are used to the old crack days. I'll put that away. So this is in PTFE by the way which is uh, basically Teflon. So this PTFE sheets you always want to look for that if possible because then your concentrates don't absorb into there. So I just have a very tiny amount. I don't even know if you can see that. This would be considered a very small dab by people who are pro dabbers or who like to dab a lot but for me that's a good sized dab. The other thing that skeeves people out with this and makes them all kind of ooh is that it does use a torch and they say oh you're using a torch just like you're smoking crack. I get it. You just kind of get used to that if you use the torch you just want to heat this up red hot. There are also e-nails which are electronic nails. They just have a heating element and you have it plugged in and you can set the temperature right where you want and then you don't have to use a torch. It's just it's hot all the time and you dab whenever you want to. I don't have one set up here so I'll show you what this looks like just so you can see what this looks like and maybe be a little less scared of it. And if you see kids dabbing, you don't go, oh, those kids are doing some dangerous things. So this is actually like a creme brulee torch, basically. And there's lots of different torches you can use. I'm going to use this one because it looks nice and gets this thing nice and red hot. Just takes a moment. And it vaporizes quickly. And I say because it's a concentrate, you really get a lot of medicine fast. So it actually could be great for pain patients and even for depression because it's very heady and it boosts your mood and makes you think and does all kinds of things. I said it'll be interesting to see how my uh, verbiage changes after I take this dab. I already took that other one there. 
But uh, the thing is, this is a medicine. Lots of people use it for creative purposes. Lots of people use it just for focus and attention kind of issues. And who's to say what is and isn't a medicine? You know, if it helps you be more creative, is that a medical use? I would say it kind of is. I mean, if you're using it productively. The real secret between a medicine and a, and a drug of abuse is whether it's helpful to you. So obviously cannabis can be abused. There are people who use cannabis to avoid dealing with their problems. There are people who use cannabis just because they're bored. But if you just use it to help yourself, it can't hurt you and it's fantastically beneficial. So that was red hot. I put that dome on there. And so now you'll see when this goes in here, it's going to vaporize it. So I want to start inhaling first. There we go. And that's a very nice hit. And just so you can see, there's some other examples of it. Here's another smaller size one with a quartz nail. A lot of people swear by quartz because it tastes better than titanium. It does. It's a little bit more maintenance, but you can see how this one has a percolator on the bottom too. This is a really nice little one here. This is called a recycler because it actually recycles the water. Don't ask me how it works. It's like magic, but the water kind of goes in a circle, so you can't really end up taking a drink. But again, with a small nail there, you can use this as well. And just for fun, here's a very nice, uh, beautifully made uh, art piece, courtesy of my son. But uh, so that is dabbing. So if you hear people talk about dabbing, they say with the torch, and people get all freaked out because of the torch, which I understand the optics aren't great if you're coming from the 80s as I am, and people were crack smoking and all that kind of stuff. But I'm sold. It's a fantastic medicine. It really is different than flowers. Flowers tend to be more relaxing, even sativas, just because when you use the whole flower, it's just a different effect. It's hard to describe the differences. If you're interested in cannabis, I recommend you try them out. One nice thing is happening now with the concentrates movement. Lots of people getting into concentrates. You can also now get basically what are e-cigarette type things, but they're all cannabis. So here's a few different examples. So this is basically a battery. And this has a USB charger to charge it up and you just screw on this cartridge and now you have a very nice uh, thing you can carry in your pocket. I like to carry at least a sativa and indica so that if I want to offer some to someone, by the way, we're in California, it's entirely legal for me to offer this to anyone over 21 for free. You can't sell it at the moment, but uh, you can offer this to anyone. So it's very nice to carry a sativa and indica and be able to offer it. And uh, I just kind of ask people if they tend towards anxiety, if they want to be boosted up, if they want to relax, if it's the evening, they think they're going to go to sleep fairly soon, maybe they should have an indica. This one's an indica, this one's a sativa, this one's a hybrid. Actually, it's Platinum Girl Scout Cookies, which is on the indica side, but Girl Scout Cookies has Durban Poison in it, which is a sativa, so it kind of balances out. In fact, that's the other point to talk about. Even though there are indicas and sativas on both ends of the spectrum, the sativas are sunny and light and boosting, and indicas kind of sleepy, relaxing in the couch, there are a lot of hybrids now that people are breeding, and they are actually very different. If you go through and try them out, if you have a hybrid on the indica side, but it's not a full indica, you can feel that it will relax you like an indica, but it won't necessarily put you to sleep the way a hard indica will, because it might also get your mind going. So they sometimes talk about, sometimes you can have a thing where you're in the couch, but also talkative. That might be a hybrid, or you can go on more on the sativa side hybrid. So you just have something that calms your nerves a little bit, but it also boosts your mood really is valuable to try out some different strains. If you're interested in cannabis, try out different methods of consuming it. These ones, I say, are just, it's charged and ready to go. You can just take it out of your pocket and, and lights up on the end. You get a nice little hit. Some of these are uh, cut with things like MCT oil or propylene glycol. I think MCT oil is probably safer than propylene glycol. Propylene glycol is what's used in the e-cigs. It is food safe, but I don't know that there's a lot of research about its effects when you vape it. MCT oil is derived from coconut oil. It's also an entirely food safe oil. A lot of it's become very popular to consume MCT oil for different uh, health things. Again, vaping it, still an unknown as far as the effects of it. Probably not great to vape a ton of it, but depends how much you use and everything has some risk. You can also get cartridges that have no other solvents in them at all that are just pure cannabis and they can be a little harder to draw but they have the advantage that they don't have anything else in them. And you can get some that are flavored so you get ones that smell like taste like blueberries or strawberries or those and they're quite nice especially if you're just hitting them occasionally. I mean I'm not a heavy user so I don't hit this round the clock. For me one of these cartridges lasts months. I know people who go through one in two days, they just hit it round the clock, but they're also not lightweights like me, so they can just hit it all day long and be entirely functional. If I hit it all day long, I would not be functional. So 
anyway, very nice, very wonderful sort of new technology, uh, different things here. There's also all kinds of portable vaporizers and things like that you can get into. And then I just want to talk a little bit also about edibles because edibles are phenomenal. They're available. Here's some Italian dressing from Stony Sauces that I've somehow ended up with. Here's a Stony Sauces maple syrup. Here's some Stony Sauces uh, white truffle and uh, some other things. Here's uh, an indica tincture, which you can use under your tongue. What is this? Uh, oh, that's some uh, caramel. Oh, delicious. So edibles are phenomenal. When you eat cannabis, it is a very different medicine. A lot of people will say, if you talk about edibles, they'll say, oh, I can't do edibles. I had a terrible experience. And that just means you took too much. So that shouldn't let you be uh, that, oh, I'll never take edibles again because I overdosed on edibles when I was in college and I ate three brownies and I should have only had a quarter of a brownie. You just have to know your dose. One of the best things about having this now be a somewhat an industry that's not regulated, but that is self-regulating in a lot of ways is that you can know what you're getting. I mean, here's a CBD capsule. This is a uh, 30 milligram capsule. It's labeled on the back. Here's some bars from Kiva Chocolates. Phenomenal company. They make really excellent chocolate. They taste delicious. This is a blackberry dark chocolate. It's 180 milligrams. That's a lot. For edibles, if you're not used to them, you should start with 10 milligrams or 15 or even five if you're super lightweight, but 10 or 15 is not going to put anyone into any real problem. So I take a bar like this and I break it into 16 pieces basically. And I keep it like this in the freezer and I have like nice bits of chocolate. It's extremely delicious. That's a pretty good size piece. Mmm. Mmm. It's really good chocolate. Dark chocolate blackberry. Tastes really good. It doesn't taste that much like cannabis. And the only danger of these that you're going to want to eat the whole bar because it's delicious. So make sure you have some other chocolate. But in that dose, it takes about an hour to an hour and a half to come on. So don't, in 30 minutes, say, I'm not feeling this. Let me better have some more. Give it time. The advantage with this, because it's a very different medicine, because it's decarboxylated, it's been heated up, and the uh, THC and other aspects of it have been released, it uh, lasts a lot longer. So it's a much more subtle kind of medicine, the way it works on your brain. You can use it for a lot longer. I find I can be really productive with this on an edible. As long as I dose right, I can be completely productive. And it just has my mind in a slightly different space that can be that can facilitate creativity or focus or whatever you use for. So this is just one example of a company. I haven't tried all the companies out there. They're phenomenal. They also, besides that one, that one is all THC. And uh, THC typically is sort of the stuff that gets you high is the way they put it. It can help uh, with focus and attention. Not necessarily great for relaxing and sleeping, but I know people who use that to sleep, who take a small piece of that, like the piece I just took. They take one before they go to sleep, right before you go to sleep. Like especially older people who have aches and pains and will tend to wake up more in the, in the night, that can actually ameliorate insomnia quite effectively. And I've seen that on a number of people who say it cured their insomnia. So quite amazing. They do also make a bar like this. This is a 50-50 CBD and THC bar. THC is kind of the stuff that, well, the line is that CHC gets you high and CBD is the stuff that does pain control and relaxes you. Kind of true, although they do are kind of interdependent more than most people think. But nevertheless, it's nice to have a 50-50. You remember how this was an 18 to 1, so this was 18 of CBD to 1 THC. So this is almost all CBD. This bar is 50-50 and it definitely is sleepier and more relaxing than that one. This, I think, is only 60 milligrams of each. So rather than being a 180 of THC, this is only 60 of THC, but it also has 60 of CBD. So when you eat it, it has a very different, more of a relaxing effect. Again, a phenomenal medicine, though. And then uh, last but not least, there are phenomenal topical medicines as well. Here's an example of a bomb from Internal, I believe. This is a uh, kind of like a tiger bomb. It actually has menthol in it. So you can smell the menthol, but it also has cannabis in it. And it's phenomenal for pain, muscle pain, joint pain. Lots of people with arthritis are using things like this. Here's another one, which is a cocoa butter uh, uh, lotion that you can put on. So the lotions, they make a lotion as well, actually, called uh, cream. And the advantage with the cream is it's very good for skin things and topical things. I knew a woman who had giant liver spots like all over her body and even on her face. And she started using the cream. And that night, her husband said, what are you doing to yourself? Because he noticed it that night. And uh, within about three weeks, they were almost completely gone and had cleared up. She said it was a miracle. She could not believe it. And I've seen a number of cases of that. 
A lot of other cases of people with pain, joint pain, arthritis, using the cream or the balm, either of those. The balm is especially great for muscle kind of issues because like with Tiger Balm, you have the menthol that really digs in there. And I've used it quite a bit when doing yoga, if I'm stretching and pulling something really far. So there's a pain, I just rub some of that balm in and it kind of numbs it down. So I guess what I really want to say is that cannabis represents an existential threat to whole classes of pharmaceuticals and other drugs because it can replace all kinds of different pain medicines. Lots of women smoke a little pot for PMS rather than taking a bufferin or some kind of Tylenol or something like that. Lots of more and more people I think are going to start using cannabis as their first line of defense for a whole slew of medical problems. And if you start doing looking online and looking at the research, there really are a lot of diseases and conditions that seem to be ameliorated in some level or another. Hundreds of conditions that seem to be ameliorated with cannabis. And cannabis is one of the safest therapeutically active substances known to man. It's actually safer than peanuts, which kill like 100 people a year. It's safer than strawberries, which kill people occasionally from allergies. Cannabis has never killed anyone in all of human history, as far as we know. And if it has killed one person, that doesn't prove that it's any more dangerous than any of these other things. Everything has some risk. So yes, cannabis can be abused. If you're using cannabis, think about your use and see if it's helping you in your life, helping you in your relationships, helping you be more productive, helping you relax better or rest better, or whatever it is. If it's getting in the way, use less or stop using cannabis. Other than that, cannabis can benefit most people. I hope this little introduction has given you some appreciation of the range of medicines that are available. And again, this is kind of just scratching the surface because now there's an explosion of different products and medicines. Terpenes are another hot area of research. Terps are not part of the, the uh, THC or CBD. They're actually part of the plant. So all plants have terpenes in them like limonene and myrcene and there's a bunch of others. There's hundreds of terpenes probably in cannabis. Most of them are not well studied, but a few of them have shown antiviral and antibacterial. Some of them actually help with memory, which is ironic because cannabis has the reputation of harming memory. And as you can see, I just took a dab and I smoked some flowers and I seem like I'm completely fine. Thanks again. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little visit. I'm Jonathan. This is the TEHNC podcast and be peaceful and fruitful and filled with love.